Critical Thinking in Buddhism, The Kalama Sutta, by Dr. Alfred Bloom. Reverend Gautama, who by yourself have understood clearly through direct knowledge, there are some monks and Brahmins who visit Kesaputta. They expound and explain and glorify their own doctrines. The doctrines of others they deprecate, revile, show contempt for and disparage. As a result, we are in doubt about the teachings of all of them. Which spoke the truth and which falsehood? Buddha said, Of course, under such circumstances, it is only natural to be uncertain and in doubt. Kalamas? When there are reasons for doubt, uncertainty is born. This is how to live. Colon. Do not go by reports or repeated hearing, by legends, by traditions, by rumors, by scriptures, by surmise, conjecture, and axioms, by inference and analogies, by agreement through pondering views, by specious reasoning or bias toward a notion because it has been pondered over, by another's seeming ability, or by the thought, quote, this monk or contemplative is our teacher, close quote. However, Kalamas, when you yourselves know, quote, such and such things are unskillful or bad, blameworthy, criticized by the wise, and if adopted and carried out lead to harm and ill and suffering, close quote, you need to abandon them. So what do you think, Kalamas? Are these things skillful or unskillful, good or bad, blameworthy or not, criticized or praised by the wise? And if undertaken and observed, do these things lead to suffering, harm, and ill, or not? Great proficiency in living leads to benefit and happiness, equanimity that is free of hate or malice, a hate-free, malice-free, and purified mind. Even in this world here and now, you should keep yourself free from hatred, free from malice, safe, sound, and happy. That is what's stated in the Kalama Sutta. The Kalama Sutta, or Sutra, is a famous text, popularly described as Buddha's, quote, Charter of Free Inquiry. It has been used for advocating prudence by the use of sound logical reasoning arguments and dialectic principles for inquiries in the practice that relates to the discipline of seeking truth, wisdom, and knowledge, whether it is religious or not. In short, the Kalama Sutta is opposed to blind faith, dogmatism, and belief spawned from specious reasoning, according to the Wikipedia entry on Kalama Sutta. Here, Gautama Buddha gives advice on how seekers should respond when they are confronted by diversity of views concerning the path to enlightenment and spiritual fulfillment, even Gautama's. He advocates a questioning, inquiring spirit, refusing to accept anything simply based on invoking an authority. This aspect of Buddhism came to the fore at the World Parliament of Religions in 1893 at the Chicago Exposition. While not giving the details of Buddhist traditional beliefs, Buddhist exponents such as Anagarika Dharmapala of Ceylon, presently Sri Lanka, promoted the harmony of Buddhism and science in contrast to Christianity, which conflicted with science, particularly on the theory of evolution. Martin J. Verhoeven, in Buddhism and Science, Probing the Boundaries of Faith and Reason, in Religion East and West, June 2001, Issue 1, pages 77 to 97, said, quote, The early missionaries of Buddhism to America purposefully stripped Buddhism of any elements that might appear superstitious, mythological, even mystical. Dharmapala, Suzuki, and Vivekananda clearly ascertained that Americans measured truth in science, and science posed little theological threat to a Buddhist and Hindu worldview. After all, Buddhism had unique advantages for someone who rejected their faith, Christian faith, due to its authoritarianism and unscientific outlook. 
According to Dharmapala, quote, Buddhism may be called the religion of analysis. It analyzes every phase of cosmic phenomenon, the constituents that go to make up a human being, and the differentiating states of mentality. It categorizes the differentiation of good, evil, and neutral. It rejects every phase of superstitious belief that is based on mere tradition, speculation, revelations, magic, analogy, logic, authority, and collected discourses, and appeals to the purified heart to distinguish the good from the bad, and to avoid doing anything that is correlated with covetousness, anger, and lust. All that is pure and free from covetousness, anger, and lust are productive of good, and therefore to be acted upon. Such was the doctrine that the Blessed One enunciated to the chiefs of the Kalama country. Close quote. The story of Gautama's search for enlightenment illustrates this principle. During his quest, Gautama did not inquire with religious authorities, but rather studied with several teacher philosophers similar to Socrates in the West. However, dissatisfied with their teachings, he left them. Eventually, he even departed from his five companions, who focused on asceticism, which placed severe restraints on the body in order to pursue an independent path to enlightenment. Modern teachers of Buddhism often cite the Kalama Sutta to show that Buddhism is a rational and critical teaching for understanding the nature of life and spiritual liberation from the bondage of ego and suffering in its many forms. It aims at seeing things as they truly are, which is a basic principle of Buddhism and its goal. Also, it is fundamental not to be attached to views. According to Dharmapala, quote, the strongest emphasis has been put by Buddha on the supreme importance of having an unprejudiced mind before we start on the road of investigating the truth. Prejudice, passion, Fear of expression of one's convictions and ignorance are the four biases that have to be sacrificed at the threshold. Close quote. Buddha's Four Noble Truths, which are at the basis of his teaching, display a rational analysis where there is a problem, namely suffering in life, a cause for that suffering, namely passions, lust, cravings, and based on the principle of cause and effect, a solution to the problem, the Eightfold Noble Path. His method is sometimes compared with medical diagnosis and treatment. What, however, began as a philosophical life-discipline approach, common in ancient times, East or West, was transformed over time to a religion replete with myths, legends, a complex symbol system, and monastic discipline. Its monastic character where followers revered monks and rituals encouraged popular devotion. For many, Buddhism became a belief system rather than a way to understand and deal with life issues. Gautama lists the various forms of information that should be questioned. 1. Do not go upon what has been acquired by repeating hearing. False or incorrect information does not become true because it is repeated over and over. People often defend a point of view by repeatedly asserting it, usually with rising voices and tempers. 2. He cautions against legends which are stories based on unproven facts. A legend or tradition appears factual but cannot be fully verified. Religion and history are full of legends and traditions aimed at exalting famous leaders or teachers or to highlight the truth of a teaching. 3. He questions rumor, that is, information from unknown and unverified sources usually circulated from one person to another. We also call it hearsay. Through modern media, urban legends and rumors spread rapidly. 4. Even scriptures are to be questioned. Scriptures gain their authority through belief in their divine origin or that they record the words of a sage. In tradition, they become unquestioned. 
In Gautama's day, the Indian Vedic scriptures were viewed as sacred revelations. In our day, the Bible is regarded by most Christians as the Word of God, though conceptions vary. The belief in the divine inspiration of the Bible is the basis for some of our highly polarized social issues, where people invoke the Bible as the authority for political or social views. Muslims regard the Quran as a revelation directly given to Muhammad and accept the principles he taught as God's or Allah laws for governing society. Jewish tradition regarding the Torah, first five books of the Bible as a body of laws similar to the latter Quran. However, the Jewish rabbis or teachers relied on reason to interpret the meaning and application of those laws. A story is told that once in a dispute, one rabbi insisted on his opinion as the truth in the dispute, and threatened to call down the voice of God to back him up. However, the other rabbis replied that the voice of God is no substitute for good reason and argument, and they would not accept the decision, even if the voice of God supported it. Revelation cannot replace reason. In our modern time, we are reminded of Porgy's comments that what's written in the Bible taint necessarily so. 5. We are not to simply accept a surmise, something accepted as true while as yet unproven. We make surmises frequently, concluding that something is true, though we may not have all the facts or information. Such conclusions are easily shaped by prejudices and are to be questioned, even when recognized authorities assert them. 6. We are not to accept something because it is an axiom, axiomatic, that is, an unquestioned apparently self-evident or assumed truth. To question an axiom seems to go against reason, but may be the highest reason. Many things once accepted in society as axioms, givens, such as the separation of races, male superiority, that the earth is flat, etc., have given way to questioning, resulting in the progress of society and culture. 7. Spacious reasoning asserts ideas which are plausible, seemingly correct or logical, but with investigation are found to be erroneous or false. They can be what we regard as half-truths. Political campaigns and religious debate often employ such assertions. 8. We are to check our biases or prejudices that arise from long study of a teaching or subject matter. 9. We should not be swayed to accept ideas simply because of the ability or expertise of the exponent. Having advanced academic degrees does not automatically make a person an authority in any field other than the field he or she has studied. 10. The final consideration questions even one's teacher. According to Gautama, one should not accept a teaching simply because one's teacher advocates for it. In all traditions, this is the most difficult. Lecterns and pulpits are the strongest barriers to questioning. Running through these ways of acquiring information and achieving spiritual understanding and faith is the issue of authority. There is a contemporary motto, quote, Question authority, close quote. Ultimately, no matter what the character or the source of an idea, we each have to judge whether that idea is fruitful or unfruitful for our lives. As the Buddha charged his disciples at his death to be a refuge to themselves, a light for themselves, so here also the responsibility for determining the truth of your life is within yourself. Thus the Buddha concluded, Kalamas, when you yourselves know these things are good, these things are not blamable, these things are praised by the wise, undertaken and observed, these things lead to benefit and happiness. Enter on, 
and abide in them.